this would be very helpful. And these are questions that we know the answers to them. We know the vibrational answers and we know the long range answers. But the reason that we're asking them of you is because in your explaining the answers to these questions, we think it's going to put a lot of things into a context that will be easier for everyone to wrap their thoughts around. And it'll be easier for everyone to get in the vortex once we've had this conversation. And there's no trickery going on here at all. In other words, we're not trying to put you into a corner. We just want you to help us explain something very basic. So first question is, what is the basis of the body of resource or assets or worth that makes up what is called world economy? Is it gold? Is it mineral? What's the stuff of economics? The most fundamental stuff of economics is the earth itself, is the land, the natural resources, is the stuff that was here before we came all right, that so, we work with. All right, so, so if that is true, and there are billions discovering and owning and buying and selling and trading and hoarding and then does that mean that the basis of the economics is finite in other words is it limited is there only so much stuff since they're not trucking more stuff in from other planets is there a point that what is to be discovered will have been discovered is there an ending point to the resources I don't know that that will be so. I don't, I don't think that the, the fact that the earth looks finite and appears to be finite means that there's any, any end to anything that can be done by humans on this planet. Well, so, how uh, do you explain that? In other words, if, if the earth is this much dirt and this much land service and this much resource, how can you make that statement? How can it not be something that must come to an end? How can it not all be mined out or discovered? How can that be? I think because humans are way more powerful. We bring something to the planet that is other than its finiteness and that we can have, there's no end. And from my point of view, from what I now understand, having studied this, um, this subject, that what looks finite Never the, is. It's, it is in and of itself. It looks, it may be finite, and that's how we think about it. Uh, but human beings will never end. We will never not be. And as long as we're in these physical bodies, it looks to me like we can figure stuff out that what looks finite, that what looks limiting is merely right. an illusion, and we will move way beyond that. Well, that's brilliant. When we but get let, around to that. That's brilliant. And we agree with everything that you're saying, but let's talk about why that is so right. So the economy is not based upon the stuff of the earth. It's based upon the resources of the ideas. Yes? Okay, sure. Because when you flip that, when you flip that, then, then you realize that huge amounts of m money and enterprise and businesses that are happening today weren't even possible 20 years ago because the ideas were not even there. So when as an economist or as a spender or as a receiver, as a flower of money, when you come to the astonishing personal realization that the economics is not about the stuff of the earth it's about the ideas now you step into a whole other place where all things are possible and then you begin to discover the ridiculousness of squabbling over the stuff because there's you'd never want to squabble over an idea well plenty of people do but there are so many more ideas still to come squabbling over resources or squabbling over ideas only puts a shadow around you that keeps you from the next discovery but the good news is, the more people that feel shortage, the stronger they ask. And the more they ask, the more resources become available to the not squabblers. 
Yes. And this is what's brilliant about your work and why I am attracted to it, because this is the way out of this, what seems to be a real limitation for humanity. But he, he, here's the most important thing that we want you to hear from us. If you were the only one having this brilliant conversation with us, if it was just confined right here, it would all still work out all right. Because the majority of people not knowing it doesn't keep it from being so. In other words, yeah. as long as there are people having step one experiences, and as long as the larger part of them, which is source, is responding with a step two experience, and long as there's one like you, it will find its way. I'm the one. Well, <laughs> and that's, and that's my experience. And there's maybe a couple of others, maybe a couple of thousand of oh, there, us ones there are who kind hundreds, of think the same There are way. hundreds of thousands of people, but it's a I, very I interesting so. thing to, to watch some of the dialogue that's going on. And it's not necessarily coming from the leadership, but it is a rumbling that's happening around where people who are thriving are now sort of being demonized as those who are getting more of their fair share. And we're wanting to explain in the context of what we're talking about here is that there will always be those who don't allow themselves to be limited by what's going on with the step one beating of the drum of the masses who will break out into that place where the abundance will rain down upon them. In other words, you just cannot redistribute the wealth of the planet evenly without, in a very short period of time, it gravitating right back to the allowers exactly. and not being received by those who are disallowing it. I agree. And what we're wanting you to feel with us as a result of this vortex that we're talking about and the people that are in or out of the vortex is that those people who are finding their way to, to what many are from the outside assuming is inappropriate um, claiming and holding of resources, they had desires that they came into alignment with, otherwise that could not have come about. Anyone who can find any way to get in the vortex now has a share of the big good pie. Okay. And so now what's happening is a whole lot of people are up in arms about those who are sharing in the pie and they are standing outside the vortex complaining that they are not, not understanding that they too, with the right understanding of the laws of the universe, could also be in a place of receiving all of the abundance that is being offered. And we want to take this away from the finite resources. There's this big pie and we're splitting it up and too few people are getting too big of a piece and, and too many people are getting too small of a piece. And we want to put it in the context of this vibrational reality that individuals are holding themselves or depriving themselves from. There will never be a time when humanity as, as a whole where every person who is participating will be simultaneously in the vortex. In fact, it will usually be the case that a smaller percentage of people are allowing themselves the delicious benefit of being in the vortex. And what's so interesting is the majority of the laws and the rules that are made are made from people who are outside the vortex, but it doesn't keep thrivers from thriving because they keep getting inside the vortex where the laws of the universe assist them, you see. They could make a law against everything that you're doing and if you didn't get upset about all the laws that they're making and you just focused upon the things that are working in your life, you'd get in the vortex and you'd get around all of it and you'd continue to thrive. No one can deprive anyone else of thriving, but no one can legislate thriving for others either. You have to orchestrate your own thriving. On a recent recording, and I mean really recent, maybe the last one or two seminars, you talked about us not even being able to comprehend where our economy could go, where it could go, where you could have such prosperity for everyone that we can't even comprehend it. Uh, originally, when you said that, I thought about the stock market being you know, a number that doesn't even make sense to anyone right now. 
Can you give us a preview into that of, you just talked about there won't be anything that blows your mind in terms of scientific discovery because we're not, that's just not how this world works. Can you give us a preview of what will lead to that? economy being so magnificent that there's so much we can prosperity. tell you precisely and exactly what brings it about first you have to acknowledge that through that which you and others have lived that you have created a vibrational reality that is indescribable in terms of size and value and loveliness there are not descriptive words that do it justice and now envision a current population and it might be those of you who are here now or generations that follow or some of both imagine that larger numbers of you have given up the battle and the fight and are no longer pushing hard against what you don't want as you've launched your rockets about what you do want and you have found through a variety of ways the means to vibrational alignment with what's in the vortex so that what's being revealed to you is being realized by you by more of you not just some of you by more of you so that larger and larger percentages of the population are allowing the abundance that they've asked for to actually actualize into their experience because economy the way you mean it is actualization of energy and sometimes it's easy to discover that conversation or to comprehend it a little better when you think back just a few short years or decades of what your economy was your populations have been large that's a misunderstanding you've had large populations but the difference in the economy is about the state of allowing that the masses are in what will lead to that in the short term is there what will lead to that allowing what you I understand the connection between connection and allowing but what's what's that it happens in two ways primarily one is as a result of what we and you are doing we are teaching laws we are teaching processes we're appealing to your logic we are helping you to find resonance with your true knowing and so we are step by step leading each other into more alignment that's one way the other way is that people know what they don't want so they ask for what they do want and they know what they don't want and they ask for that what they do want they know what they don't want until they create such a critical mass of asking and until they become such a glut of people pushing against people and people being disconnected from their source and feeling the awfulness of what that feels like when they're disconnected from their source and speaking out and speaking out and speaking out until there is a sort of collective consciousness of an I give up moment where there's just too much meanness and too much awfulness and too much unnecessary unkindness and too much suffering and too much hunger and too much war and too much dissatisfaction on steroids for the endurance of the likes of you who are extensions of pure positive love energy you just reach this place where you have asked and denied and asked and denied and asked and denied and asked and denied till you're just all out of denying you just let it go the pushing against is just too much for now and as that happens now the whole world doesn't have to do it at the same time and won't but as a higher and higher percentage reach that place then you begin to see that happen you're already beginning to see that happening and then we want to add to that something really important and that is not one other has to understand this in order for you to have that I give up moment and you're not giving up your hopes and dreams you're not giving up your creative genius you're not giving up any of your desires you're just giving up your resistance you're just giving up the struggle